The Ferndale Turn was one of the most lucrative trains run by the Burlington Northern in its early years. So today's video will concentrate on the highlights of how that train ran. I'm your host, Burr Stewart, and this is the first ever time that we ran the Ferndale Turn, affectionately known as the Fern Turn, on my HO scale Burlington Northern Railroad. The train originated in Stacy Street Yard in South Seattle, where it picked up empty cars destined for the Intalco plant in Ferndale, Washington, about 100 miles north of Seattle. On this day, the train is operated by Aidan Murray, and you can see off to the left the Interbay Yardmaster, Jim Betts. Jim has no cars billed for the Fern Turn, so I gave Aiden a clearance to run straight through the yard on the main line. Today's Fern Turn has a mixture of 50-foot box cars with wide doors and bulkhead flat cars that will be loaded with aluminum ingots from the plant. This is a rare case on the prototype of a high-priority freight train that was full of empty cars because the railroad made so much money on the loads that this would generate. Oops, it appears that Aiden hit a switch wrong or something. As I've joked before, you're watching reality model railroad video here. Also, I meant to say welcome to the 19th episode of my model railroad operations series. There we go, we're back underway. This train is headed northbound, so you can see the Interbay engine terminal on the right and the Balmer Yard classification tracks on the left, with a three-bay car repair shop left of that. This uh, view is taken by a GoPro camera sitting where a rail fan might be located on the Dravis Street overpass across the yard. I've sped up the action on the video a little bit, but you can see the advantages of having a separate yard lead from the main line here because uh, Jim is able to drill his cars back and forth and you can hear him in the background talking to Magnus Christensen who's about to run a different train and he and Jim are working out the details of what will be included in that train. Meanwhile, our fern turn just blows by the whole activity. And as you can see there, once Jim's hand gets out of the way, it's proceeding around to go over bridge number four, the Salmon Bay Bridge of the Great Northern. I didn't have cameras available everywhere during this operating session, so you'll just have to imagine the train rumbling across that beautiful Salmon Bay Bridge. Leaving Ballard, our train now moves north along the coast route past Golden Gardens Park and Carkey Park. That switch to the left is the switch that leads down towards the Fremont branch uh, that headed east from the shore to service the U University of Washington and eventually, in the old days, ended up in Woodenville. On the very upper right, uh, along the wall, you can see a Milwaukee Road engine and caboose. That's the passing siding that allows us to get at the aluminum plant in Ferndale. Now the Fern Turn is blowing through Muckleteo, Washington. Having picked up a few empty cars in the Bayside Yard in Everett, our train is now heading north towards the Burlington Yard near Mount Vernon, Washington. It's a bit longer than when we first started out, but those two GP18s should be easily able to take it up that 2% grade to the yard. Okay. 
Aiden's doing a good job of monitoring the progress of his train, but now he's going to start getting nervous about what happens when he arrives in the Burlington Yard, which is off to the left in this photo. Uh, the fun begins at Burlington because we have to figure out what the heck we're doing. Because it says, right at Burlington, select four cars, leave the rest of the yard off spot. And so it says, I think what I'm probably going to do is uh, first four cars, leave everything else, and then drop the caboose. Mm -hmm. And then. Do, do you see those cars underneath the, the, the distance underneath the uh, rainbow bridge? Yeah. Do you have to hide the blue part? Yeah. Those are the four cars you're going to be pulling. As Aiden and I are discussing here, there is only room for four cars in the Ferndale plant on this layout. So when you have a long train like this, you need to leave all but four cars off spot in the Burlington yard and then take the four cars up, run around them uh, near the plant and shove them into the plant. If you look to the upper right of the cement silos there in the distance, you can see a blue boxcar, which is one of the four boxcars loaded full of aluminum that are at the Ferndale plant that we're going to here. In a few minutes, we'll see Aiden from this same view switching out those cars and returning to the Burlington yard to then return the loaded cars down to Everett and Seattle where they can get on the through trains that go south and east. Well now our train has crossed the Stilaguamish River in the left there and is starting to cross the Skagit River. Unfortunately, I don't have a shot of that today, but you've seen that long bridge in other videos on my channel. And we're about to have some excitement because the train hit the bridge and derailed. Wow, quick save, Jacob. Fortunately, he caught it before it ran all the way downhill. Yeah, that most definitely would have probably derailed at the end right over there. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, good save. Good save, Yeah, good save, Jacob. Well, after putting the train back together in Burlington and a lot of flat switching to pick out just the four cars that he needed. Aiden has made it away all around from Burlington through Bellingham and is now at the siding at the Ferndale plant. You can see we're having a little trouble with the caboose running away from the train on that grade. This is the first time we've ever run this train, so we'll have to figure out how to address that. Now here we have a view from across the room showing the final switching maneuver of pushing those four cars in there. The four cars he needs to pull are behind the diagonal rainbow bridge there. The two blue cars plus a couple more that are hidden in the trees. Now he's going to run around the four cars that he has and then he can pull the four that are in the plant out. Those would be the loaded cars and then shove his empty cars into where those cars are. And I'll speed up the video so that this doesn't take as long as it did in real life. That silo, the gray silo there, uh, is the limestone junction branch of the Milwaukee Road. And it shares the runaround siding with the Ferndale plant, even though in real life they're about 20 miles apart. But these are the kinds of trade-offs we make in model railroads. Uh, some other day we'll run that limestone junction train and you'll be able to see a, a similar maneuver. Only in that case we'll be placing empty jennies there and pulling the loaded ones full of limestone. Meanwhile, Aiden has gotten around his train and as you can see from the caboose there, he's shoved the four empty cars in position. 
Now, if he had been more closely supervised, we wouldn't have let him flick those cars into place by hand. But in this case, we can make an exception because it was getting near the end of the operating session and he really wanted to get this job finished before we shut down. So a few minutes later, having departed Ferndale and passed through Bellingham, our Fern turn stops in the Burlington yard to pick up a couple of uh, bulkhead flats with aluminum ingots that were left from the previous operating session. Mount Baker is on the backdrop above the upper deck, which is Burlington, and uh, the lower deck is the Stacy Street Yard in Seattle, with Lee Marsh being the yard master down there. Uh, Aiden has already completed the switching up here in Burlington, and you can see those bulkhead flat cars in the front of his train now. These cars will be left off at Bayside, so unfortunately we won't see them again in this video, but maybe some other video will see them moving towards their markets. The voices in the background are garbled because I sped up this part of the video by a factor of two. But here's what it looks like in real life. Oops, another switch thrown against him. So now we're departing Burlington and heading down to Bayside and Interbay. A few minutes later, we see the Fern Turn with its four loaded aluminum cars having passed Bellingham, Burlington, and Everett's Bayside Yard heading along past Carkeek Park in Golden Gardens in Seattle, southbound towards Inner Bay. Having dropped off the two bulkhead flats in Bayside and Everett, we have two cars for Inner Bay and two cars for Stacy, so he'll stop in Inner Bay, drop two of the cars off, and then head to Stacy with the last two cars and to tie up his run. Let's catch that action from the Dravis Street Bridge at Inner Bay again. Of course, this time the train is southbound and he just needs to drop his caboose, shove two cars back to the yardmaster, pick up his caboose again, and he can proceed on to Stacy. And this time the yardmaster instructed Aiden to come in on a track, which is the track right next to the main, to the left of it, and he's going to shove his two cars onto the B track which will be very easy for the yardmaster to pick up and sort. I know the fidelity of this last shot isn't too great, but you do see the trappings of a busy yard here. Got the rotating beacon on the switch engine on the left, a lineup of cabooses waiting for their next assignment. You have the car repair shed on the left there, the arrival departure tracks as we call them in the middle of the yard, and the engine terminal on the right hand side. Soon we'll even have sand towers on that, those columns next to the platform, which will be cool. Well, it looks like Aiden has dropped off his two cars, and now all he has to do is pull back onto the A-track, pick up his caboose, and he can head back to Stacy Street Yard and terminate his run. When I started modeling this yard 35 years ago, I had no idea how much fun I would have um, not only building it, but the whole railroad that surrounds it. Similarly, when I started doing model railroad operations videos with uh, episode number one, I had no idea that a year and a half later we would be watching episode number 19. I hope you've enjoyed them, and if you haven't seen the rest, uh, feel free to look at my channel, subscribe to it, and I'll keep producing videos. 
uh, we've only scratched the surface of all the trains that we run in an operating session. And so I look forward to um, showing you many more videos like this that describe a single train that of course fits into a much more complex web of operations when we have an operating session such as we had today. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains. You've got to love that rotating beacon. Not to mention the caboose.